Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. With rumours AMD have cancelled the high-end RDNA 4 parts, such as N41, there have been a lot of questions online as to the reasons that AMD have taken this approach. After all, it means that cards such as NVIDIA's RTX 5080, possibly even 5070, really will not have any answers from AMD because the highest performance GPU that AMD will continue to offer would be something like the 7900 XTX, assuming N31 doesn't see some kind of refresh, and frankly, I'm very skeptical that will occur. Instead, N43 and 44 will be significantly slower, at least according to a lot of the rumors that I've personally been hearing. But there is a very interesting tweet which popped up online that I really want to talk to you guys about, and plus also some other very interesting news stories as well. And we're going to get into all of this after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So the Bits and Chips Twitter account states that AMD will sacrifice next generation Radeon gaming GPUs, the RX 8000 series output at TSMC, in order to pump up FPGA and GPGPU production. Now, of course, ultimately TSMC are the ones who have a certain allocation of, well, wafers and stuff that they can produce for AMD. And as we all know, at this point, there is, let's just say, a lot of pressure for companies to pin out products, for example, you know, based upon AI acceleration. We've seen the absolute ridiculous growth of NVIDIA recently. I mean, just look at their bloody stock prices. It's just absolutely absurd. Just imagine if you were to put like, I don't know, even 10,000 10, US dollars in NVIDIA back in the day and you'd have just sat on it. Like you would be, you'd be pretty happy is what I'm trying to say. But anyway, I wanted to talk about this because a couple of articles were starting to pop up online that this is why AMD sacrificed the flagship RDNA 4 based GPUs, basically for AI chips and servers. And I have to tell you guys, and Bits and Chips doesn't specifically state this is the only reason, I don't think this is 100% true. To my understand, I mean, first of all, N44 and 43, to my understanding anyway, is not based upon TSMC's free NM process. It's more likely to be, from what I've heard anyway, uh, something like the uh, four NM process, and it's going to be a monolithic die, and they're going to be absolutely tiny anyway, like really small, like, you know, low 100 um, square millimeters, really small. That's not an exact number, by the way. I'm just giving an example, like really small. But I don't think this is the reason that AMD have cancelled it. Now, it could be a reason, um, but I don't think it's the only one. To my understanding, there were inherent problems with RDNA 4, which they could have fixed them. It's basically to do with the old multi-compute die thing. Um, now, I have heard through the grapevine that they had considered basically turning it into a monolithic die, and I've spoken about this before in a couple of videos, so I'm not going to tread over old ground here. You can check it out if you want. Uh, just search RDNA 4 on the channel. I've also put out an update for this for RDNA 5 as well, where, again, I do tread over some of the old ground. But I do think this is mostly right, because I've spoken to yet more people about this just recently, and they do think that, yeah, AMD basically just were at this crossroads of what do they do. Now, to my understanding, um, basically, RDNA 4 is going to launch, for, again, the lower end part, such as N43. And then roughly six quarters later, obviously things can slip, but roughly six quarters later, we're going to instead see the company launch RDNA 5, which is going to have significant performance upticks. So... Basically, it's mostly due to engineering resources and the company essentially deciding to draw a line in the sand and say, you know what, we could fix this, 
but if we do it's going to be behind schedule it's probably not going to be as good as ideally it should be and we're taking more resources away for the future product and quite honestly i think this is one of those cases where amd did the right thing um, I think that RDNA 4 was shaping up, at least with the early rumors of the multiple GCXs, it was shaping up to be pretty decent. But everyone knows N33 missed performance targets. Like, it's, it's you know, it it's it's not a well-kept secret at this point that there were a lot of rumors that N33, uh, sorry, N31, 32, so on, were going to do much better. And, um, yeah. It's, yeah, it missed performance targets, that's all I'll say. And I don't think AMD want to deal with this again. Uh, because their CPUs are absolutely just, they're just, they're just crazy at the moment. Like, Zen 5 is going to be absolutely just ridiculous. Um, so I think it's just a case of AMD doing the right thing, saying, you know what, let's just draw a line in the sand. However, I would not be surprised if this is also kind of a bonus... Um, because again, the lower end RDNA 4 based GPUs like N43 and 44, they're going to be absolutely titchy in terms of the size. And I don't think they're going to be uh, using the free NM process anyway, unless something has changed. Also, speaking of things which have changed, I just want to mention a couple of very interesting things. So um, there was a very interesting interview with Scott Herkelman over at Club 386. It's a couple of weeks old now, but it didn't get a huge amount of traction. I've been meaning to cover this for a while, but as regular viewers know, I've basically just been getting my ass kicked with flu. I'm pretty much over it by now. I'm just kind of dealing with, uh, you know, the last dregs and yeah, it's it, much better. So I should be back to normal. Um, next couple of days, well, I've been pretty much back to normal, but now I'm just trying to catch up with everything. Um, but anyway, this interview essentially tackles a couple of very interesting questions. The first is ray tracing performance. I'm going to go over this really briefly, but basically Scott Herkelman says that they do plan to improve ray tracing in future generations, of course, and they're going to basically uh, have the right architecture for, quote, efficient ray tracing. Now, the reason that this is interesting, because you know, it's like, well, we know ray tracing is going to get better from one generation to the other. That's just kind of obvious, is the efficient part of that statement. And one of the patents that we saw from AMD seemed to indicate that they had a more NVIDIA-like approach for their ray tracing. Now, obviously, this is going to be less of a big deal because, again, N41, for example, is canned. But I'm going to be very curious to see how N, oh, N51 oh and so on end up because i've heard that they are really 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 potentially amazing but at the end of the day until they release the product i'm going to keep some level of skepticism there were also some very interesting questions from club 386 about power consumption so energy efficiency is weaker than in video on paper they state for example the 4070 is 200 watts versus the 7700 XT's 245. Now, one of the things that he said, that is Scott, is that, you know, there are bugs at the moment in their drivers and they are working on them. And uh, idle power in particular is one of the issues that they're kind of dealing with at the moment. And to be, give AMD their credit, they have been improving things in their drivers. However, they also state, and you can see on screen that in desktop, Power consumption matters, but not to everyone. They also go on to say, of course, that performance per watt is very important because of the environment and so on and so on. Now, I have to say, guys, I will be very, very, very happy if AMD kind of takes this approach and realizes that, uh, you know what? It's absolutely fine to do a 450, 500 watt GPU and just go absolutely balls to the wall, you know, crazy, make the highest end GPU they can for RDNA 5 and just actually have a flagship which is just absolutely monstrous in terms of die size. Well, I suppose die size is kind of a bit weird anyway when you're talking about chiplets, but I really do hope they just go absolutely balls to the wall and produce a GPU which is, you know, a flagship because I do love uh, what they've done with the 7800 XT and there are a couple of other really nice cards in their lineup, but with that said, while the 4090, for example, doesn't appeal to everyone, it's really nice to actually have these GPUs. I think, you know, they, I think they're really exciting for the market, so I'd love to see what AMD does. Finally, on the last piece of news for AMD, I just want to talk really briefly 
about um, a result actually that the Momo US actually discovered on Sysoft Sandra's website. This is for a 7995WX, which is a 96 core processor. This, of course, is the Thread Ripper. Now, it doesn't really need me to go through all of these results, and I'm not simply going to because I'll be here until Christmas going through all of the different numbers. And it's not, this is kind of just a bonus bit of information, just so you can see it on screen. Uh, long story short, of course, this is going to be a part which is going to be for the highest end, you know, users like video editors and so on and so on, or people who are doing a lot of virtualization work, or just someone who likes the idea of running just a shit ton of CPU cores, I guess. You can, however, see that this is not going to be necessarily ideal for all workloads. Obviously, the clock frequency does kind of take a bit of a hit here. Uh, but even so, this is an absolutely awesome product. And obviously, Intel have not been as competitive when it comes to HED parts. So I'm curious for those of you who are currently running high-end, uh, or sorry, should I say HEDT system, um, like what's your experience been with AMD? Like, would you switch to one of these processors or not? Um, I know a lot of folks do kind of want the additional IO as well. It's obviously not just about the increased core count. So, you know, that bandwidth is also really important. With that said, Take care of yourselves, guys. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.